This is why I will never rent from an Airbnb or any rental space in Japan again. Hi, because the guy is in here, a content creator from Jamaica who lives in Japan. Now, let me tell you something. Adowa here a soul. Come on this video and comment any foolishness about, oh, you don't know nothing. Nah, 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 nah. Maybe if you fell in, then you wouldn't have had this. Hey, shut up. Shut your filthy mouth. I don't want to hear anything from any of you today because today is the day that I, I that, that you, there will be irrefutable evidence of the bias and discrimination many of us face while living in Japan. And I know there are many more instances that have occurred, but persons don't have a voice and are unable to speak about it. I'm not saying that Japan all in all is a bad place. I'm saying there are instances where and they're occurring more often now and people are now speaking out more about their negative experiences with Japanese persons. And this particular Japanese person is shady and belongs somewhere where I can't speak about on the internet and I don't want to put my parents to shame because they grazed me very well. Now, I've had one experience prior to this with a shady Japanese business wherein I rented a space I put the time, and I forget that Japan is on the soldier time, universal time, so 0400 is 4 a.m., 4 in the morning, and 1600 is 4 in the evening. I went to a rental space at 4 in the evening, but I re reserved for 4 in the morning. I entered the place, recorded my video, left, after which two hours later, I got a phone call saying, hey, you entered the space at the wrong time, you need to pay me extra money. Why didn't the man call me? When he see me when when I enter the space because there's a camera in there. Why did he wait until I use space for the time I thought I rented it for before contacting me? Why did he threaten to go to the police if I didn't pay any money after reserving the space for a spark of time? No one else came in to use the space or tried to use the space. So I rented it for two hours, but it was on the wrong side of four o'clock. My fault. No leniency showed, no no discretion shown. You got your money. No one was nobody was impeded or inconvenienced by that. But you waited until I used the space in the wrong time because I'm a foreigner and decided that you're going to fleece me for money. Touch me to go to jail and get the police involved and it could be considered a theft. And it's like, I'll pay $50,000 in fines if I didn't do that. So I just paid an extra 8000 and I learned my lesson then. Now, this weekend past Halloween weekend. Now, people, let me tell you something. I was supposed to be at this place at 4.30 p.m. A friend rented an Airbnb to film some content and she'll post a video sometime later. I don't know when she's posting a video. I was running late, but place as usual, these places are kind of a little way outside. So this is in Tokyo now, all right? Just outside um, a station called Tanashi. And I'm trying to find a place. I say, hey, I can't find a place. And so I said, oh, you're coming to meet XYZ? Let's go, go this way. I couldn't hear a sound. When I opened the door, I, when I rang the doorbell, then I said, oh, someone's at the door. And I opened the door because it was open. It was unlocked, sorry. And then I heard maybe, let's say, a noise level of a uh, car door opening and they were talking, people talking. So I heard chatter, but it wasn't anything loud or disturbing. Went inside, started having fun talking, eating, whatever. Cool. No. Come Couple people went outside. There are about ten of us there in the Airbnb. Mix so you have half Japanese um, there as half Japanese, half Africans there. Um, sorry, half Japanese and they're from the countries of Africa, right? Cool. Jamaican, me, um, half Ghanaians, half Nigerians, fully Japanese, half Japanese American, British people, Americans. It was a whole mix, and there were no full Jap full Japanese people there. Cool, cool. Couple people go outside to chill or whatever. About nine o'clock, nine fifteen, they come back inside. A girl tried to leave because she has some business to do. Um, this man just shows up inside the door of the 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 the, the, the Airbnb. No, let me tell you, the Airbnb is pristine. It is something out of a movie. It has three levels. All right, beds on the first floor, living kitchen, dining room on the second floor, and then beds again on the top floor. I'm like, this place looks like a yakuza only, but it's fine. Cool. Man comes in and says, Oh, you guys are noisy. Um, all of you show me IDs. Uh, ID, ID, we said, Oh, maybe show took up. We said, Oh, 
Omaiwa. And speaking to us using words that are demeaning to person. So you know how anime people speak to each other like aggressively? You don't speak to people normally like that because it was seen as rude. And, 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 in, and it's informal, rude, and sometimes it can be used to, to, uh, in a derogatory way. Now, I don't know what was happening with Homeboy, but he felt that he was going to get his way today. But uh uh, he didn't bank on having persons who were fluent in Japanese and also knew the law being in the company of the people that were there. I'm going to show you a video of him standing in the doorway. So he came in, standing in the doorway, locked the door. With us inside, he was on the inside in the Genkan and refused to move out of the way when people tried to pass him. Now, if you know anything about Japanese law, if you touch a Japanese person, your ass yes, is grass, basically. So you don't touch them. You don't get involved. You just chill. You just, you just try to de-escalate the situation. And once you speak to them properly, then it usually de-escalates. But this guy was on something. He was out here to shake us down. And you'll find out later on in the story what happened. So... He, start, he was recording at this time he's still recording the, a couple of members of the group and one of the members who's um, half japanese said yo what are you doing why are you recording us um, was like, why, 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 why? and he said yo move that and he pushed the phone very important story pushed the phone out of the way i don't know if what flew up in homeboy's head now he's like yes by the way he's japanese of course in the whole it's japanese homeboy cool he thought that this was his payday because he thought he was going to go to the police or whatever. So we said, we're going to call the police because he refused to move out of the way. We tried to ask him nicely and he actually pushed one of the girls, actually breaking her fingernails. But, you know, that's a story for another day. She was, she was not Japanese. But I didn't know she spoke Japanese until the end. Wait, cool. So they're like maybe four guys and five guys, five girls in the house now. Um, being held under were held hostage in this airbnb because this japanese man was on a power trip saying that we were noisy said, there was no noise and we're gonna come and he was, you, know, you can't leave without showing us your idea like who the hell is this man i didn't even know he was a host i didn't know who he was until um the person who rented the place said, oh is he, he's actually a landlord like so why is this man inside the place locking us in like we're thinking about jumping out the window to get away, whatever, but we knew we did nothing wrong. So as according to these Japanese people, if you know you did nothing wrong, then you won't you won't hide anything, you know? I won't be you won't you know, I mean oh, shut up, I hate I hate the mentality sometimes. Cool. So we said, all right, we're gonna call the police because this is foolishness. And he's like, Well, you sure you want to call the police? Because he was trying I think he was trying to avoid the police getting involved. He was just trying to shake us down. But we weren't having it. We weren't in the mood to talk. We just wanted to go home. This is now at 9 30. Police come. This is the first thing I know that Japan is not a real place. Police said, Hey, uh, what's going on? And they reviewed his video and they looked at our video. They went outside and talked to him. We are still locked inside, we can't leave. Police come back and say, Hey, so we're from the violence department, like physical abuse department. And this is a verbal disagreement. So we have to call the people from the verbal disagreement department. What? So, because it is, I don't know. I know, if, I know you have specialized departments, but are you that serious that somebody, a police officer can't handle this a, a, a situation because it's not in the department, i.e. Physical disagreement as opposed a physical altercation opposed to verbal disagreement. What is Japan? You don't ask questions and you don't speak out against it because then you're seen as anti-Japan and you need to go back to your home country, etc. Et Moving on, because I'm not an idiot and I have a brain and think for myself. We're like, okay, what's the issue? This man starts talking back and forth. Before he's coming in and say, okay. And we keep imploring to them, hey, we need to catch our train. Shouldn't, shouldn't, most of the Shouldn't, shouldn't, I don't do so. And like, what are you going to do? Because I live in Chiba. One girl lives all the way in, in Kanagawa. One guy lives near the army base. Uh, it was crazy. So we need, we were going to miss our rides home. Because Halloween night, we're going to go out and chill. But the vibe was just broken because of this homeboy, fake Yakuza looking homie. Not even fake Yakuza. He's just a fake, I don't know what he was. This Japanese guy, just really weird glasses, whatever. You see the video when I post it. So the police say, okay, all right, let's try to move this along quickly. People, let's break you up into groups. Take your IDs, write it down. Um, check the IDs because we don't want to make sure people are underage. Because, you know, they thought... He was trying to say that we are staying over and sleeping in the apartment when we were just coming by for a dinner and then leaving the person who's actually renting the apartment. So it's not a problem to do it that way based on the agreement and whatever. And then even when she just came with her friends, 
he had no problem giving the keys and whatever. So all of a sudden now it's a problem. And he said somebody called the police because, you know, they were scared. I was like, what, what, bro? What are you on about, fam? He comes back into the room now. So this is where we know things get serious. He started talking, oh my, what about that guy in the yellow shirt? The guy in the yellow shirt, I want to talk to him. What, what, what are you going to do about him? We're like, yo, he's talking to the police right now. Relax. He said, oh my God, they didn't do that. And he looked at the girl and said, why can't you guys even speak Japanese? He was very rude and very demeaning to us in the, in, in, in the whole time talking. At this point, my friend was there. I said, yo, um, sir, uh, I guess we have reached a point where there will be no agreement. Uh, let's just call it. We've been respectful. Da, 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 da. But I said, hey, you know, Zidane, Zidane. So we thought Zidane as in like, Headbutting. So the guy came out in a yellow shirt. I don't want to call his name because I don't want to involve him in that much. And in, in but he's I guess the main person in the story. Japanese man says to us on in Nihon Iru Nisho. That is all. Oh no, Zidan now. Zidan. So we're like Zidan. We start to laugh because it must be a joke. Oh, Zidane, like headbutt Zidane. He's like, oh my God, I never can I hung up. Even the officers were like confused because his pronunciation was not really clear. Zidane, Zidane, it was like Zidane. All the persons were like, hmm, no, 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 like Jeopardy, thinking, what does he mean? Everybody search it and then, oh, Zidane, da. ah, oh, you want a court settlement? We're like, ar, <laughs> Scooby Doo, Scooby Scooby. My guy, are you mad? You're on something today, bruv. <laughs> At that point, well, this guy is... Oh, this guy is an idiot. Uh, we, we go to court. We, we go to court. Let us, let us take it to court. Because we clearly... We, we, this man has no case. We go to court. So everybody at Uncle we're getting ready to leave now. And the person says, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. And he says, so we, we, amu we abused him. So how much do you want us to pay? Oh, Sanju Mandel. He wanted three thousand US dollars for damages. <laughs> Buddy, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, hello. I think uh, I wasn't born yesterday. I know I'm a foreigner. I know I I I live in your. I know it's your country, and we just live in it. But that is even for us. That is a bit steep. Hmm? A bit steep. Meaning we are not going to pay that money. Anywho. We start getting ready to leave because yo, we keep saying, yo, shouldn't, 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 yo, train, train, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. He goes outside and they watch the video again. Even the police officers at this point, this is how I knew, even the police officers were like, what the hell is this man on about 3,000 US? And they watched the video again, they reviewed the video, our version of the video, five times and saw that it was only the hand, the, the, the phone that was touched. Boom, move the phone out of the way. No hand, no damages. Went outside, took him outside, spoke to him, then he came back and said, hey, okay, so you guys can leave for your own free will. It's about that time because y'all live in different places. That was one of the issues that saved us too. None of us lived in that area. All of us lived all about the place. So it would be hard for us to meet and come back and start to think. One important detail as well, I might have left out. One of the girls didn't have her ID because she changed her purse. And at that point, she started speaking fluent, native level Japanese. I'm like, look at you. You go, girl, defend yourself. Once he heard somebody said, Moshi. Moshi in that tone that means their level their Japanese is there. Is there the right intonation? It is there. All right, not the one I know. So there, I know. Satara, shut there. Or they know. Kotoga, kike. Those people can't really speak Japanese. But when you hear people say Moshi, so it's a, it's a, it's a, oh, and you, you hear that type of talking. Yeah, you know, they're smooth with it. They got it like that. In the comments below, let me know if you know people that speak like no, no, there. So stay oh, no, 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 there. Like they have to be counting the words to speak Japanese. It's not really bad. I do that sometimes when I'm drunk, but it is what it is. Anyways, they said you can leave. He's going to ask you for your information, but you don't have to give him. Just ignore him and don't engage. Just head out. So at this point, two girls go out in front of me. I'm falling after because I need to get to an event I'm supposed to play at in Shinjuku. Upon leaving, upon, upon, upon reaching this man, he grabs, tries to grab one of the girls and grabs her shoulder and says, Oi, ID me, said, Oh, this girl's like, Can I say? And they pass him and walked out while the police were there. Now. So, this is the audacity of this man, this natto eating man, right? The audacity after being told by the police to leave us alone in his Japanese power trip and right. 
decides that he's going to grab this girl because he is the boss. He is above the law. But it is a mindset in Japan because they know the police work for them. That they often act with out impunity. They act like they are the cat's pajamas and they do whatever they want because they know the police have to work for them and the system is set up for them so they know especially when it comes to japanese foreigners relations that they have the upper hand so thank the lord for the video that um the content creator my friend m took because we would have never gone home that night that was definitely a show of of, 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 of discrimination, I feel, and a, a show an abuse of, of, of your, your right as a Japanese citizen against foreigners to me. That's how it felt. I, I was so frustrated. I stood there for an hour and four to five minutes trying to leave this place. And I couldn't leave because this Japanese man was on a power trip and trying to shake us down for 3,000 USD. But Japan is, is, is a perfect country. So I mean, why would anything that happen to anybody? But I have the evidence here and I'm gonna put the stuff there so you can see that these things happen. And I'm sure that occurrences similar to this or persons who are tourists that don't speak Japanese or don't know their rights or don't know the law have gone through things but won't speak about it. But I'm not that guy, I'm not the one, so I will, speak about my experiences good and bad that are in japan because it's my life <laughs> wow damn that took a lot so yeah let me know in the comments below what you think about the situation um what would you have done if you were host held hostage by a japanese landlord because he felt that he he's a, he is more than you as he is more human and more qualified to do things than you because he's japanese a lot of japanese people feel superior to foreigners in japan and it's something that a lot of us have to deal with with the microaggressions in this country that are not seen on the surface because you don't live here. You visit here and you get a nice hospitality package to go, you know, and you go back and it's, 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 a, it's a marketing and how Japan reinvents themselves and masks, uh, masks a lot of their um, issues. But overall, it's a country, a nice place to live. You, learn, you get to develop... Um, learn about yourself as an individual you you get a level of independence that you might have had in your home country you get to travel you get to experience a whole new culture and a lot of different things so i mean all in all it's, it's, it's a good place but there are many many things that that don't sit well with me and i will never not speak about things that um that affect people or might affect people you know i prepare you for the good and the bad and the ugly and that's what my channel has always been about but i mean you know this is what it is. All right. Well, it's a long ass video. All right. Let me know in the comments. Um, subscribe for more stuff like this. If you want to see videos, content, pick up yourself. Because guys, you're Jamaican YouTuber. Wow. I have to post a full, a short form on this point Instagram. All right. I'm on. Peace.